Hey, good morning. So what is it about the Dead Poet Society film that continues to inspire me? What is it about the story or the film? I'm really curious. We saw it again last night. Oh, and hey, happy Thanksgiving. lovely people of the planet. This is Jeff O. This is the Morning Ride Pedal Powered Podcast. Look, folks, I don't know nothing. I'm just a dude on a bicycle. <laughs> Trying to evolve as a filmmaker, as a poet, as a human being. Thank you so much for being on the ride with me this morning. Happy Thanksgiving. How's it going out there? You hanging out with friends and family today? You hanging out by yourself? However you like to do it, I hope you're getting to do that today. This is getting to be an intense time of year, I know, for a lot of us. Actually, I've been really enjoying the winter holiday seasons the last few years. People getting together, people thinking about others. People getting together because it's cold out in the Northern Hemisphere, obviously. This morning, just out for a bike ride because, well, I'm not really on the way anywhere. <laughs> but it's not an existential comment. It's just I'm out for a ride this morning. Wanted to come hang out with you. I haven't been on uh, this ride in a while, the morning ride. So I've been getting a lot of questions. Everything's good, folks. I'm trying to uh, restructure it, working with some folks that I have a ton of respect for. Uh, helping me with some business decisions and ooh, look at this park they've got that old building torn down I haven't been through here in a long time since they opened up the north side trail over there by uh, Boise Cascade Lake where we've been going I guess we can slow down we're not in a hurry to get anywhere this morning are we we're still gonna try to keep this succinct for you so it's fall and I'm thinking about fall movies Fall is such a beautiful time of year. The uh, physical frivolity of summer, cooling down, starting to look inward a little bit as the light shifts from east to west, from west to east. No, from east to west, for crying out loud. Jeffrey, what side of the planet do you live on? <laughs> as it kind of goes from east to west to uh, kind of a more to south-north kind of thing. It's so fun to be over on this part of the trail again, isn't it, man? I haven't been over here in so long. So, Jennifer and I watched Dead Poet Society last night. That was a film that really, really inspired me back in the day when it first came out. We'll get into that. We watched it last night. And it hit me so hard. Again, it is still such an amazingly relevant film and story. The, the technology of it doesn't look old. Um, and the storytelling. Phew. So what is it about Dead Poet Society that that film continues to inspire me after all these years? Well, the obvious one, of course, is nostalgia. I mean, this is a personal, subjective comment. But I was a senior in high school in 1988-89 school year. And Dead Poet Society came out in June of 89, right after I had graduated from high school, before I was headed over to the first university I attended. Hey, good morning. I was super excited when I saw the film and heading off to college. Hey, good morning. 
it was a, the perfect moment for me. And actually, Ethan Hawk and I are almost exactly the same age. We're like 11 days apart. So I think that that's fascinating. So for me, the nostalgia of, I was at the age that the guys in the film, the boys in the film, the prep school students, high school students, I was the same age as them. So nostalgia plays a big part of that for me that, yeah, that film came out when I was that age. And I remember, you know, trying to find who I am. And uh, now at 49 years old, still trying to find who I am, but in a different way. I have more points of reference to consider now. Historical perspectives. Hey, good morning. I didn't think I'd meet anyone out here this morning. That's cool. I love it that people are getting out, getting some fresh air. It's a nice 32-ish degrees here this morning. Nice biking weather. I'm trying not to get too warmed up here. Hey, good morning. The second reason, of course, is uh, the characters. No, oh, is that right? Is that what we're doing next? No, what we're doing next is the story. The story. What is it about the Dead Poet Society story that continues to engage my imagination, my emotion, and my intellect? Well, for one, what the uh, the writer of the film, the screenwriter, uh, I'm forgetting his first name, but his last name is Shulman. He created a specific story for specific characters based on huge storytelling themes. And then of course, Mr. Weir, the director of the film, put these together for us beautifully. But of course, Robin Williams acting, we're gonna get into that really made the film, I think. One of the things that I noticed last night that I hadn't before because I didn't know about these things maybe the last time I saw this film, it's been years, I'm sure, was uh, how it resembles uh, Plato's allegory of the cave. How it, in fact, is a sort of telling of Plato's allegory of the cave. Yo! Yeah, gotta do a wall ride. Physical therapy paying off, man. <laughs> I'm able to do little wall rides. I'm still not bunny hopping yet. That would stress my back out. I'm not complaining, I'm just saying. We're getting better and I'm grateful for that today. <clears throat> so the allegory of the cave is uh, an old discussion between, uh, that Plato imagined between he and his mentor, Socrates, where let's say that there's some folks chained in a cave and they're facing a wall and they see all these shadows moving around on the wall. And that's their perspective. That's the limit of their perspective. They perceive the shadows as the thing itself, as, a, as reality. And of course, that is a reality. But then what happens when one day one of the prisoners breaks free and leaves the cave and is blinded when he gets out into the sunlight, right? It's like, oh my God. Well, once his eyes adjust, once he understands this new world that he's in, he's excited and he goes back to tell the other prisoners, like, you guys got to get out of here because there's this beautiful world. But when he re-enters the cave, after being in the light, he can't see. His perspective of reality, what is possible, is changed, right? So that's really fascinating to me. In uh, Joseph Campbell's mythology, he talks about how in character development, the lowest or the scariest point for a character is when the character has to go into an unknown situation he calls the cave. So a character has to go into the cave in order to change. And if he doesn't go into the cave, 
life is going to stay the same or continue to get worse depending on the, the character situation, right? Now, Joseph Campbell built up these ideas from the mythology of, well, of everybody over the years. He studied ancient mythologies, found the similarities among them, and represented this back in a book called, what is it, The Hero of a Thousand Faces? So the idea, the big story idea in Dead Poet Society is how do we as humans seize the day, right? How do we, how do we challenge our perceptions? How do we check our assumptions so that we don't get stuck in ruts? And any of you who have been a part of this podcast for a while know that that's like a big struggle of mine. You know, I've got professional responsibilities, got a creative professional job, which I love, you know, writing, photography, making videos. And, uh, but I would rather be spending eight hours a day making my own stuff. That's nothing against the day job. That's just, you know, I would rather do that. So how do I seize the day and make that happen? So that's like a big struggle for me as, a, as an artist, as a working artist. And do I wanna put out commercial work personally? No, not really. I wanna really look at, you know, what can cinema do that the other art forms can't? What can poetry do that the other art forms can't? How does music fit into these? How does perception of these fit in to sharing them? Hey, good morning, I'm here on your left. <clears throat> I think she was saying good girl to, their dog, to her dog there. <laughs> Ooh, this one's icy, icy too. Yeah, we don't ever go over this bridge. We're doing a big loop today, folks. Boy, it is nice out. It is a gorgeous morning. Jennifer's already gone on a run. I'll have to check in with her and make sure that she had a great run. Because, man, it's gorgeous out. So basically, Schulman connected not just big themes, but, but archetypal stories for us, recognizable stories, things that we feel maybe as Jung would call the collective unconsciousness, that we feel the story. It's like, yeah, I know what it's like to, to not know the next thing, to want to grow up, to, to be independent, to, what is that called, to individuate from my parents, from society, if that's my path. And what are the risks of that? What were the risks to uh, the teacher, John Keating, played by Robin Williams? Well, you can step outside the lines, but that may mean that you lose your ability to do the thing that you do. You know, he kind of, uh, he was living his ride. <laughs> he was riding his ride there as an English professor. Something that he loved to do, something that he was great at, inspiring, people to be their best selves through literature, right? I mean, how freaking cool is that? Happened to me in college. I remember the day, January 29, 93, 1993. Hey, fellas, let me get through there. Thank you. There was a child went forth. That poem was read in class. A poem by Walt Whitman. He didn't read it. He was dead. Come on, folks. I'm not that old. <laughs> Actually, I don't think of myself as old. That's, we're not on that, are we? So anyway, so the th two of the things that struck me last night as we were re-watching Dead Poets Society and how much I loved it was the uh, nostalgia for me of remembering seeing it back when it came out, being the age of the boys when it came out. Um, that was super cool. And then connecting the big archetypal story that I recognized, I could see myself, hey, good morning. I could see myself in the story, um, I re or I related to the story. And even at a deeper level, what the writers and what the filmmakers did for Dead Poets Society was through the characters. They really, really gave each character their own storyline, which is kind of the point of the film, right? We gotta find our own story. Gotta find our own ride. We gotta be on our own ride. How do you? How do you continue to ride? You know, when it 
gets snowy and icy? How does your ride change? How does your ride change when it starts to rain? You know, these are all things. I love this. <laughs> For me, obviously, I love the allegory, the metaphor of the bike ride and how throughout the year I get to adjust to different external conditions that have no malevolence against me. Malevolence against me in case that was slurred. You know, it's just weather. It's just the earth doing its thing and I'm trying to bike my way through it. So when it rains, I have to change my ride. My ride doesn't change. I'm still on my ride, but I adjust. So it's kind of an exciting thing for me. I love that allegory. Hey, good morning. But I think it's really through the characters. I mean, obviously the story, big story that we all connect with, but the characters, highly, highly relatable. The other thing about the characters in this film is that each one made decisions and we saw the results, the immediate results and the long-term results, or we can imagine the long-term results of those decisions, right? Um, who believes that Dalton went on to become a lawyer? I don't know. I want to believe that Dalton went on to become an artist. Maybe never uh, making a lot of money, but deciding to live that passion that he has through the film that eventually gets him kicked out of, oh my gosh, what's the name of the school? I'm forgetting the name of the school now. Woo, baby. Oh, we've never gone through here on the morning ride, have we? What do you think of this tunnel? Isn't that cool? So I love that about this film. As a filmmaker, I learned a lot last night thinking about, oh wow, how do you have a big cast like this? And hey, good morning. How do you have a big cast? And everyone gets their own storyline. It's not complex. It's, they, we don't spend a lot of time with each of the boys. Obviously, we spend a lot of time with Neil and uh, a lot of time with uh, Robin Williams. I'm honestly, I'm, I'm not sure who the main character is in this story. <laughs> um, you know, typically a story is defined by, by change and who we follow through the most changes. But uh, John Keating in this film, he didn't change. He just stayed on his ride. It's like, nope, this is my ride. Which is beautiful because he was trying to, he was an example for the boys to stay on their own rides. So cool. I'm so grateful this film got made. It was cool. I really identified with Todd Anderson because even though I was kind of a loud mouth in high school, I didn't know what to say and I didn't know how to express myself. And so it just blurted out like a sweaty tooth madman. <laughs> Maybe today I'm a sweaty tooth madman. Look at the hills with snow. Good grief, isn't that amazing? So anyway, back to the story. I didn't, I didn't really tie up that end, did I? That's the great thing about this podcast. Who knows what's gonna happen? <laughs> wow, they put a sauna on top of that one condo over there. Man, it is beautiful out here this morning. I'm so grateful that you're here with me. I really, really appreciate it. So anyway, the allegory of the cave. One of the other, another thing that I really learned as a filmmaker and uh, come on folks, keep moving. There you go, there you go. Was I love how long they took on the transition. The first night, um, you know, the, the boys had found out about uh, the Dead Poet Society from the old annual of uh, the school that they were at, that Keating had gone to, had been a student at years and years before them. And, uh, and so they decided to recreate it. They were inspired by an idea and wanted to engage with that idea in their own way and make it their own. And, uh, and then of course, they go into the cave. And the cool thing about this was a filmmaker perspective, thinking about the allegory of the cave and what is reality? What is, what is the difference between perception and knowledge? What is the difference between um, the effects of education 
and uh, nature, you know? The thing is, is that in the natural world, we see and experience and perceive things. And sometimes knowing gets in the way and sometimes knowing helps us understand that more. We're not as superstitious about certain things as we used to be. But what we're finding is that there are all kinds of mysterious, beautiful, electro-psycho-spiritual energies floating around that, uh, you know, some people perceive and some people can't. And so we're starting to understand that more and more even scientifically. And by scientifically, I mean observationally, because science is a methodology of observing change over time. That's basically what science is, right? But I like that allegory of the cave and when they're in the cave, how the flashlights are always moving around and you always see someone's face in the flashlight. So you're not, we're not seeing the shadows on the wall. They are in their perceived reality in the cave. But then to, uh, <laughs> don't mix the streams, to mix the, uh, the analogies, to go back to Joseph Campbell's idea of the cave is to go into that place that, we're, that is unknown and to face the unknown, to face ourselves, right? So cool. I think that's, I think that's where the deeper story comes from is that it's a tribal story um, of, of change. And um, I thought of the uh, uh, Iron John story too, the uh, Robert Bly's book about uh, the transition from boyhood to manhood in Western society and how we've, like in America, we don't, we don't as Americans have specific rituals for that. Obviously, different religions, different cultures have their own but generally we don't have that transition. Speaking of transitions, God, that scene, that first night that they went to the cave and they're going out and they're running at night and we just see them in hooded jackets. They've all got their hoods on and they're running and the fog's coming up. And if you, if you remember, or if you watch the film again and listen, there's this synth score that comes in right there, a synthesizer score, sounds like Blade Runner and Chad, my friend at work, <laughs> would totally uh, get on me for that because that is probably a, a heavy-handed and, and reductive description. But when I think of Blade Runner, I think of great synth synthesizer score films. And uh, anyway, there was that segment. And, and otherwise, we were in 1959. And so I thought that was super cool. Hey, good morning, on your left. So nostalgia, big story, like story that every human on the planet literally could attach themselves to, not in a specific way that these characters are rendered, but in a human way that yes, I have felt like Neil, I have felt like Charlie Dalton, I have felt like Todd Anderson, I felt like um, Cameron, who, you know, kind of ratted on all of his friends because he couldn't, he couldn't believe what he, what, he, what he saw or couldn't see in the cave. He was kind of one of the, uh, I, I, I feel that he was kind of one of the characters maybe that in the allegory of the cave, that when the one that had escaped went out and came back, he was like, no dude, you're crazy. This is the only reality. And I think there's a lot of uh, parallels among that, between that and where we are today in America. We have a lot of, um, uh, juxtapositions of perceptions of reality and um, you know it's tough I think we're in a transition so again in America we're in a transition just like in the film the other thing is they held on that I don't I didn't I didn't look at the time but I'm guessing that it was at least 30 seconds maybe a minute and a half while the boys are just running through the woods they are transitioning they are no longer just boys at a boys school they are becoming members of the Dead Poet Society. They are evolving as human beings right there. And that takes time. I mean, that's a big transition, right? It's a big rite of passage that they go through. Man, I get so excited. Thanks for listening to me this morning, you guys. So, <clears throat> Dead Poet Society, 
Love that film. Another one I just saw a tweet this morning about that as it being Thanksgiving, and this film has a scene at Thanksgiving dinner. It's called Lesbomb, L-E-Z-B-O-M-B. -B. Lesbomb, it's a, it's a charming, charming indie film uh, about a girl who isn't quite ready to come out to her family at Thanksgiving dinner, but her girlfriend is ready for her to come out to her family. It's a super charming film, highly recommend it. I'm glad I didn't remember that last night because I would have missed being inspired again to seize the day, to stay on my ride, to figure out my ride, to, uh, you know, hashtag if you love riding a bicycle, get on on a bicycle, whatever your bicycle is, folks. Which leads me to, I think this is the last episode of the Morning Ride Pedal Powered Podcast for a bit. I know I've taken a couple of weeks off and I really appreciate you guys being patient with me through that. But here's the thing, this is episode 157 total. Isn't that crazy? I've really enjoyed, um, yeah, let's, let's sit down and do this face to face here. I have really, really enjoyed We'll even take off the helmet for you. I have really, really enjoyed getting to ride with you, um, getting to be on the ride with you, getting to hear about your rides when you guys connect with me. I love that so much, thank you. Please keep letting me know about what's, what's, what's going on with you. What's, what is your ride like? I love hearing what is, what is going on with you. Um, my ride right now, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to bring a different kind of value to this podcast. Um, I've been putting these out and they're highly personal. It's like a journal and I love it. But what I really want to do is be able to provide a, um, something that you can take away with you other than just this monkey on a bike trying to evolve as a filmmaker, poet, and human being, which if you're into that, I really appreciate it. I really, really do. I cannot say enough um, how much I appreciate that. So Morning Ride Pedal Powered Podcast, as it is, is probably going to move into season five or maybe something else altogether. I don't know if the name is going to change. Um, we're moving everything back over to my personal website from morningridepodcast.com. And um, I'm really excited about that because um, I kind of, I kind of um, lost a lot of momentum by splitting those. It was a great idea. I'm glad I did it. Um, learned a lot uh, <laughs> just about, you know, how do you get an idea out there in the world? And especially one that, that I'm not fully committed to, you know, I mean, like, come on, there's a lot of days that neither one of us had a good time listening to this monkey, right? <laughs> um, anyway, that's enough about that. Basically, I'm taking a break. I'm trying to figure out um, the format, the content of this website and another, uh, this website, this podcast or YouTube channel. Um, I'm really looking at doing another, an, another idea. It may be the same name anyway. Please stay in touch with me. Um, if you uh, send me a note on Twitter, Instagram, or jeffo at jeffreyoliver.com, if you want to be notified when this thing comes up again, because um, I hate just ditching you, but um, that's, that's where we are right now, man. Carpe diem, seizing the day, doing the best that I can. Hey, folks, I really appreciate you being with me this morning. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you so very, very much for riding along with me. I know some of you have ridden along to probably most of the 157 episodes of this. Uh, we're in season four now, which I think some of these are starting to feel right. Um, I read a statistic that most YouTubers and podcasters don't really start to understand what they're doing until around 150 episodes. So I think I'm starting to understand that. I want to see how can I sustain what I really want to do, um, how I really want to be able to ride with you. Um, so thanks for letting me have this break. Thanks for being on the ride with me. Folks, very, very sincerely, seize the day, man. I'm telling this, this is a message to me. Seizing the day. I love riding a bicycle. I'm going to get out on a bicycle. I'm trying to figure out how to evolve as a filmmaker, poet, and human being. Thanks for being on the ride with me, folks. It's the only one we've got.